And for more on the controversial arrest of the CBN governor, an international affairs analyst, H.K. Okwa, uh, from Dallas, Texas, in the United States, and a defense correspondent, Sifon Isien, join me now. Thanks for joining us, Mr. H.K. Okwa. Now let's Thank go straight to the me. heart of Thank the matter. Now let's go straight to the heart of the matter. Before Godwin Emifeli's suspension, many Nigerians had been calling for his sack. Do you see suspension bringing in more scrutiny and balance into Nigeria's financial landscape? Well, you know, before now, there's been some, some call, uh, uh, you know, on, on the governor to be removed. I think during the campaign, there were some rumor whether that was real or just, you know, public outcry. Uh, based on the old Naira and the new Naira and all those things that, you know, was uh, causing uh, a lot of hardship and confusion for Nigerians. Um, you know, what the Constitution says about removing uh, a central bank governor, I think that is mute because uh, when Jonathan removed the Sanusi, I don't think there was any any challenge of that. I think when you are appointed, you know, to a federal position, yes, you know, for a cause, you know, uh, the president actually, uh, you, you serve at the pleasure of the president, regardless of what the constitution says. Uh, and in this case, um, you know, Mr. Emefle being suspended and now being arrested, obviously there are some, some, some allegations that maybe will be coming out, you know, in, in, in the later weeks to see what actually has caused this thing to happen. But MFLA has, you know, on record, has been the longest serving uh, central bank governor in the history of Nigeria. You know, so I think he's, he's had maybe 10 years or so. So uh, this is very uh, uh, unpleasant. But again, you know, when you see this uh, political situation in Nigeria and how things are done, it, it tells everybody uh, the law has to be strengthened. And fair, fairness and equity has to be introduced in the system, but you know, with politics, don't expect that to happen because they, you know, that there might be some other uh, ulterior motives uh, behind this. Um, uh, before now, I had I had said that you know, MF Le should have resigned. You know, when he made the attempt, you know, uh, that he was running for president. I don't know why he would have, you know, uh, stepped out to say he was running for president while at the same time keeping the post of of uh, central bank governor. He should have resigned outright and faced that uh, ambition of his, but he didn't. And, and now, so, uh, you know, uh, Tinubu was a candidate, in, you know, at the same time he was trying to run for president. So who knows? Is this personal? We don't know. Is there some other facts they have to have encouraged the president to suspend him and then he, him getting arrested? Uh, we don't know, but it's very interesting. All right, and to our defense correspondent, Sifon, uh, with the latest video and the statements released by the DSS, we can now say that the former governor is in custody without doubt. Can you tell us what you know? Well, um, just as you said, the video now trending, which we've also shown on this channel, indicates that the um, embattled Governor of the Central Bank is now in custody of the GSS, which is also now been confirmed by the spokesman for the GSS, Mr. Peter Afunaya. We also saw in that video that, you know, he was being carried um, and ferried from an open back vehicle to an airplane, apparently, you know, ostensibly to be flown out of that particular location, perhaps from Lagos to Abuja. What eventually will happen after now? is um, um, the steps that will be taken legally in terms of prosecution. Previously, we'd seen that the DSS had sought to obtain a warrant for his arrest, but was um, turned down by the courts for lacking sufficient evidence. But now we see the DSS confirming that they have him in his custody. Um, that, for us, could suggest that they now have a warrant to arrest the suspended Governor of the Central Bank. All right, and back to our uh, international affairs analyst, Mr. H.K. Okwa. Uh, with um, the fate of the CBN governor is still hanging in the balance, where do you see the pendulum swinging at the National Assembly? I'm sorry, repeat that question again. 
Yeah, I, I, I said uh, earlier that uh, the fate of the CBN governor is still hanging in the balance as we speak. Where do you see the pendulum swinging at the National Assembly? As you know, you know, uh, you know the guest has said a uh, prosecution. I don't know, I mean, would you prosecute it without first issuing an indictment? And because the indictment will make the allegations as to what actually happened for him to be suspended. You know, suspension is different than an arrest. It's actually uh, uh, there's an intention to, you know, to, to take the matter to court. But before you do that, before you start to prosecute, you should have issued an indictment, making an allegation. So these are sometimes some of the things they violated. So, so, so they, there's a lot of cloud. It's something we don't understand in days. Uh, but again, you know, in the coming weeks or days or, or sooner, or his own lawyers will jump in now and want to find out what exactly led for him to be arrested. Was he, uh, if he was arrested in Lagos, was he trying to get out of the country? And then, you know, they, they arrested him. Is his passport taken? You know, if you if you arrest him as a high profile uh, person of political uh, interest, was his passport taken? Where was he going? So these are some of the things that are going to be coming out and Nigerians will now respond accordingly. But of course, he's going to have his legal team you know, to you know, to fight on his behalf, would he be you know released on bail for personal recognition? Uh, all of those things are what is going on. But again, you know, it's going to add it to uh, what Nigerians are going to expect from Tinubu. Uh, are they going to expect you know a due process, or are they going to expect one of these ad hoc kind of action? Because you know he's now the captain of the boat. And he's going to sell it at the way he wants. And Nigeria needs to be given some level of confidence and comfort that you know if there's something that warrants this sort of action, they're going to be you know given information uh, as to what you know what is going on. So that way, at least they wait to see the full thing play out. So, can you walk us through what we should expect now that we know he is in DSS custody? Well, I mean, again, it's, it's not a, a, a clear process, but what should happen that will be fair to him and fair to Nigerians and fair to the process is for people to now say, okay, he, he was picked up, he was suspended. These are the reasons for the suspension. Okay, that one yeah. has to happen first. Yeah. And then uh, the, the DSS, you know, picking him up now said because that is an arrest, you know, shows there's some criminal intent you know, or allegations. So DSS now has to come in and say, this is why he was arrested. And then his lawyers will respond. Uh, whether the Senate will take it up, uh, but, but the thing is, what would the Senate do? Would they revert, uh, reverse this action and say, no, he shouldn't have been removed. He should go back to his job. Or again, it becomes, you know, the matter between the judiciary, uh, not only the legislative and the executive arm. Uh, you know, how, how that is, who is going to win in that, we don't know. But it's really uh, a shameful thing. I don't know of any central bank governor uh, in the history of Nigeria that has faced what uh, MF has faced, you know, being suspended. When Sanusi was suspended, nobody arrested him, but now MF is going through it. Maybe there are more allegations. None of those things has nothing to do with the other. But the point is, Tinibu, as the new captain of the state of, you know, the, uh, the ship of state, has to show that he's going to be different, and that difference will be in the positive way he's going to let Nigerians know, hey, this is what I'm the action I'm taking, and this is what prompted me to take that action. All right, uh, back to our defense correspondent, uh, Sifon Etienne. What do you see coming in coming days? What we see coming in the days after now, um, we see the DSS approaching the courts again, you know, with uh, charges. Now we have allegations um, now in public domain for which he's being held, including terrorism financing. But then the charges will not have to be made clear before a court of competent jurisdiction. And um, arraigning him would also be the next thing where he would plead guilty or not, which is um, the normal process in court. And um, the case um, would set out. Uh, but proving the allegations beyond reasonable doubt is a, a big task that the um, Department of State Services will have to, you know, put its acts together to establish, especially in this case and concern the fact that we have um, someone of this status, the CBN governor. 
Right, thanks, gentlemen. Our international affairs analyst, Ejikyo Kwa, there, and our defense correspondent, Sifoni Sien, sharing their thoughts on the updates we have on the arrest of the, uh, of the CBN government.